We're going to present the business plan for Med Letters. I'm Joseph Romanik. I'm a senior here at Creighton. I'm a finance major, and I'm also pre-health. My name is Josh Gerald. I have a finance degree from Creighton, and I'm also in my final year of law school. And my name is Julie Mahoney. I have a bachelor's of chemical engineering from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm an MBA student here at Creighton. We'd like to invite our founder and creator of Med Letters up to share a few words about the Med Letter story and why he created it. Dr. Doug Morin. And his wife, Gail. Thanks. I'm Dr. Morin, Dr. Doug Morin. This is my wife, Gail. About a year ago, uh, our son had a tragic accident and ended up uh, here at the Creighton uh, Hospital. Had a craniotomy, 10 days in the ICU, uh, eight weeks of rehabilitation. During that time, we did a daily blog. I wrote a daily blog on Caring Bridge, and it received a lot of positive response. So once Tony got better and we were back home, uh, we decided to try to dream up a way to bottle this talent of my writing a daily blog. It wasn't possible to write one for everybody who wanted one, so we tried to turn it around a little bit and make it a tool that physicians could use for communicating with their uh, with their patients and patients' families in critical situations like that. And that's how Med Letters was, uh, was conceived. We started working on it through the fall and in the summer, and then I met Ann, and we became part of this program, and it's been very exciting to be here. All right, thank you, Dr. Warren. All right, here's an agenda of what we're going to cover tonight real quickly. Um, we're just going to walk you through our whole business plan for Med Letters. So, Josh. What is a med letter? Med letters is a letter generating software that allows a doctor to provide a patient with a detailed informational letter concerning their diagnosis and treatment. The letters are very personalized and they're written in a very easy to read format that anyone can understand. The, patient, the doctor can give the patient the med letter uh, exactly or precisely after they're seen or it can be given to a relative or a caregiver. For example, if you have an elderly parent who lives across country and you want to know exactly what's going on, if they're having a treatment or procedure being done, you can have a med letter sent to you so that you can follow along and keep updated. And one of the best aspects of a med letter is that it's easy to create. Josh is right. They are very easy to create. It's a cloud-based system, so you sign in with a username and password just like you'd sign on to a Gmail or Yahoo account. You're able to type in the patient's name. You can use nicknames, choose their gender, which will give you gender-specific pronouns to make it even more customized and specific to your patient. You can pick your diagnosis from a comprehensive list of diagnoses available. And then from there, you can pick medications that you're prescribing, medications that you're not prescribing but have in the past, along with a personalized closing or the tests that you have run during this particular visit or past visits. You're able to pick and choose your values for your prescription medication and your um, tests uh, results. From there, you're able to edit it and further customize it by adding and subtracting or making it more applicable to your particular patient. From there, you can print it and, and this give is, it to your patient. This is what an actual med letter looks like. It's designed for a patient that has strep throat. As you can see at the top, the physician can customize the letterhead. The salutation is also able to be customized to whoever the end user is. And then goes through a detailed explanation of your diagnosis, which is again clear and easy to read. And then it also gives you what your medication <coughs> specifications are. So why do we need med letters? There is a communication gap between patients and doctors, and this is primarily because the information that a patient receives right now is very technical and hard to understand, and this makes it difficult for a patient to follow through with their treatment successfully. Uh, this is also referred to as patient noncompliance, and quite frankly, the cost of patient noncompliance is staggering. It costs the healthcare industry in between 100 to $300 billion a year, more importantly is the cost on human life. Whenever you or a loved one is being treated, you want to make sure that the treatment is successful. The current system 
makes it extremely hard to do that. And as you can see with these statistics, that's a problem. Med letters is the solution. So med letters market. Med letters market is basically the entire healthcare industry. Healthcare is huge in our country. It made up 17.3% of the GDP in the year 2009. Also, who's going to buy med letters? The service? Well, there's over 600,000 physicians, surgeons across the board in the United States. And this is only expected to increase almost 22% by the year 2018. However, regional growth for Nebraska and Iowa is slightly different. We've identified two potential competitors for med letters. The first are self-diagnosis websites such as WebMD. And these, the way these sites work are very simple. For example, if you have a rash on your arm and you don't know how, what it is or where you got it from, you can easily log on to WebMD. You can type in your systems. It'll give you a list of possible uh, reasons for what your rash is, and it'll give you a list of ways to treatment. The problem is, is that it's a poor substitute for actually visiting a physician. The second competitor is the electronic health or the electronic medical record. But in 2009, Congress did pass a bill that helps to increase the use of these particular systems to ease the health care um, costs on, on not only doctors, but also the hospital systems. These, some of these systems do have patient printouts or at least links to some of the websites Josh was talking about for doctors to print off. However, they are not as patient specific. This is an actual example from an EHR company about what their letters are. As you can see, the summation of the diagnosis is about one sentence at the top. Then it proceeds to give the lab results, where next to it, it gives you what a normal person's goal should be, and then followed up by uh, extra measures you can take, such as aerobic exercise 20 to 30 minutes a day. They just lack so much in comparison to a med letter which walks you through the diagnosis, tell you what it is, and actually how you can fix it. And we give all the same information as these generic letters, but a more personalized way to give it. We also actually were able to talk to uh, an EHR company uh, at Vanderbilt. Uh, at the Vanderbilt Medical Center, we were able to get in contact with Dr. Georges. He's an internal medicine specialist. He actually uses about 40 a day. Every time he has a patient, when he goes, he goes onto his EHR, he fills it out, and then he sends a letter. He'll do it through a web portal, or else he'll physically mail it to them. He said his department does over a thousand a week. And he said that his letters are short and just have the lab results, basically. He was astounded when he looked at a med letters letter and saw all the extra information and the personalized touch that it puts into each letter. This is the Med Letters team. Currently, it consists of Dr. Doug Morin and, and his wife, Gail, who we met earlier, but also consists of two additional independent sales representatives. One is located in the Des Moines area, so it is locally, and one's located in Phoenix, Arizona. In the future, we'd like to hire on an office manager, someone to handle the calls so that it doesn't overburden our, our creators. Um, we'd also like to uh, hire a marketing and sales manager to help co coordinate our independent sales representatives. And along with that sales manager, we hope to increase our independent representatives from the current level 2 to 10 to 15. To market med letters, these are kind of our focus areas. In year one, we're going to focus in the red circle. We realize that we have an individual in Phoenix, Arizona. She's kind of the outlier, but we're, our main focus is in the direct area in which we can drive to very easily. In year two, we're going to focus towards the East Coast. A majority of the United States population lives on the East Coast, which will also be easy for us to get to um, some high caliber medical centers. And then in the third year, we're going to expand all the way to the West Coast, including um, the Western Midwest, into the more rural areas as well as California to complete the package of getting it out nationally. Med Letters has incurred 
startup costs of around $75,000. They were able to mitigate part of the cost in two ways. One, they were able to attain a small business loan for around $30,000. And two, they were able to find helpful friends and family that were helped uh, reduce a lot of the main fees. But the big fee was the programming and software writing for the website to get MedLetters up and running. And so now it's fully operational. These startup costs really mark the biggest cost that MedLetters should incur as there's not really a cost per number of clients they have. Uh, our financial assumptions we used, revenues. They get $1,500 per client per year for the use of med letters. Also, when making our financial statements, we assumed that 50% of the clients will renew after having the service for one year. Med letters, as stated previously, will be marketed and sold by independent sales reps. And these independent sales reps will only be paid on commission based only. Uh, they will receive 25% for signing a new client and 20% for re-signing an existing MedLetters client. This leaves MedLetters with between $1,100 to $1,200 of pure profit per client. MedLetters has also set the goal to gain 1% of the, the physicians within the United States within the next three years. With the current number of physicians at just about 660,000, that leaves about 6,600 that MedLetters hopes to capture. If they're able to do this by the year 2013, capture 1% of the market, there's a revenue potential of over $11 million. But we realize 1%, that's, that's pretty big. So let's chop our goal in half. Capturing half a percent of the US physicians gives you over $5.5 million. Now let's just say they decide they don't want to go to the East Coast and the West Coast. They want to just really concentrate right here. Of the physicians in Iowa and Nebraska, if they can get 2,700, that's 25% of the doctors in Iowa and Nebraska, there's a revenue potential of over $4 million. And if they can only get 10%, or just around 1,100 doctors in the Iowa and Nebraska area, it's still over $1.6 million in just potential revenue. In the future, because med letters will be so financially stable, we think that maintaining a status quo as continuing as a standalone business will be a viable option, or they could partner with an EHR. Partnering with an EHR will give them a strategic partner and access to resources such as financial and human resources that will allow them to penetrate the market even greater than they already have. To sum up our presentation, here's a general timeline of how we're going to progress through the years. As you can see, our startup costs are noted at the beginning of the timeline. And as we progress through the different marketing areas, the 1% at the end of 2013 is also on that timeline. Thank you all for coming. We've We'd love to have you to our exhibit to maybe try out a med letter. We'll have a couple of computers available for you to make your own specific med letter. <laughs>